Welcome back and thank you very much for your time. We're getting now into our news review segment on TV3 New Day. And we'll start off with Tilapia. Tilapia has got uh, this happening. He says that the Garden of Ghana and their eyes will open and they will know better. That's what the serpent is saying to the woman clad in uh, national colors and comprehensive sexuality education. Two children playing around innocently. Well, I'm sure you also do know that the uh, Christian Council and the Catholic Bishop Conference have asked for uh, withdrawal of the uh, comprehensive sexuality education uh, because they think that uh, subtle um, attempts to push LGBT, lesbianism, gay, bisexual, and transgender uh, agenda. Well, the daily graphic this morning on the News Plus app, Graphic News Plus app, and I encourage you to go and um, subscribe onto it, download it on your Google Play Store or your iOS uh, application or store. Daily Graphic this morning reports that 15 tankers burned in Bong uh, fuel depot fire. Petroleum consumers suspect foul play. Extend retirement age beyond 60. AU's Commission Deputy Chair is advocating and Buankra Island Port project stalls. It's been 18 years and still counting. That's what the Daily Graphic uh, reports for our attention this morning. Let's see if we can find uh, some more stories. Well, the mirror this morning is talking also about uh, that's that's well that's an old edition. Tomorrow, I'm sure you have a fresh edition. But what's the graphic show be saying on the Gra graphic news plus app? It says uh, love from down under is deep. Um, Adina says Kelvin Boy will survive. Who's saying that? Find a copy and read. And tale of green eyed monster. Secular musicians all the way. No more collab with gospel. Access Joyce Blessings. Okay, so Joyce Blessing uh, <laughs> obviously is not perhaps happy with the collaboration so far. Let's see what Junior Graphic has to offer. We've seen this before. Um, well, Graphic Sports maybe finally, and then we'll check out of here. Uh, stars officials cry for Afcon money, and Black Queens face Kenya test on Friday. Papu, I will rebrand Ghana football. And Coleman is world's fastest man. He's Ghanaian, and we're proud of him. Uh, well, but of course, he's uh, running for the U.S. as well. But he is the world's fastest man. Those are the front page stories you have there on, um, on the uh, Graphic News Plus app. Enjoy that cartoon while we settle down to get the detail. And also... On the front page of the Daily Guide newspaper, NDC begs Rawlings of a controversial book. Akufuado rescues SHS graduate from what scholarship. NDC exposed in sex education saga media and the siege, says the NMC boss, Yaobui Dwyer Boafo. The Ghanaian Times, fire guards 12 tankers, officers at Bong near Tema. Uh, let's be bold in prosecuting corrupt public officials. The National Communication, uh, Commission for Civic Education, NCC, uh, is advocating five nabbed for possessing 113 parcels of suspected weed. And at the GJ's 70th anniversary lecture, media attack reprehensible, abominable, NMC boss, the National Media Commission boss, Yao Buidu Ayabwafo. He's also a lawyer, by the way. BNFT, fish farmers attempt to beat EU standard with FAO's improved method. Yea to tackle youth unemployment head on, a maritime sector grossly underutilized, protecting depositor and investor funds in Ghana's fund management and insurance sectors. A petition to the presidency and the economic management team headed by Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. The Finder newspaper, $10 billion annual boost for economy for, from integrated aluminium industry chief of staff, Frema Pare, there. And allegations against the failure marking false, malicious uh, Ghana Water Company Limited to uh, his defense of the, the board chairman. And 1.2 million students to benefit from free SHS this year. It comes with a photo of the uh, information minister, Mr. Kujo Ponkruma. And NIA begins registration in northern Northeast and Savannah regions. My guest this morning, lawyer Abraham Amalba. He is a member of the NDC's legal team. He also is part of the communication team. Council, good morning. Good Thank morning. you. How are you doing? Not quite well. Why? You have a sweet blue dress on. What's your point? The excruciating Ghanaian economy, the overtaxed Ghanaian people are crying. 
-hmm. Water bill has gone up. Lights bill has gone up. Talk tax has gone up. Transport fares have gone up. And fuel prices have gone up. And so it is an excruciating period for Ghanaians. Dr. Baumia says we've reduced what you increased by 5%. Dr. Baumia is disingenuous. Oh, how? His defense. You don't see the reduction? His defense mm. is hogwash. You see, anytime a government in its third year still blames the previous administration for its woes, mm. it is a tacit admission of failure. I thought Dr. Baumia indicated that the MDC was incompetent. Mm. And so if his yardstick is to go back when Ghanaians are complaining about harsh economic conditions, to go back and cite NDC. Mm. Did we go or did we come when we voted for them? Okay, we'll get into the conversations. Um, I just wanted you to say good morning, but you started <laughs> with... How <laughs> can okay, the morning be good? Mr. Georgia, you see, is also <coughs> the uh, National Communications Director of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO. He's here. Chief, good morning. Oh, yeah. Nice one. <laughs> good morning. Are, are you yes. feeling like uh, Mr. Malaba? I, I am hopeful uh, the conditions and, uh, are better. The macroeconomic indicators are pointers that are giving me hope that uh, it's good the way we are going. Uh, the cuckoo farmer is smiling uh, as of today. And so these are very good. And you, you've spoken about the free SHS uh, beneficiaries. And right. mm. uh, these are very good policies that are being put in place for uh, the Ghanaian people to feel better than they used to be. And to, to, to talk about what the Honorable just said. Uh, what His Excellency the Vice President is saying is that, look, whether we like it or not, there was a government preceding this one. Mm. And you look at the performance, juxtapose that to what is happening today. Mm. This government definitely, definitely is a mm. better manager of the economy than what uh, uh, we, 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 we took over mm. from. You get it. And so that's all he's saying. And these are grounded in facts, mm. which, which are not contestable. I believe Honorable will not contest those facts adduced by His Excellency the Vice President. Okay. Let me invite you to join us via WhatsApp 020216633. That's our WhatsApp line again, 02021. 66633. Join us. We're also on Twitter and on Facebook. If you tweet at me at Hughes underscore um, on air or at Bella Mundi or at Crystal Kwame, I will share those uh, comments with you. But know also that TV3 New Day has been nominated in the forthcoming RTP Awards that will hold on the 12th of October this year. And so your votes, as always, are needed to push us there again. We hold a title and we want to keep the title star 447 star 111 hash. That's the magic uh, code to text and, and make sure you're, you're voting. Yours truly is also the TV morning show host of the year. I hold that title. Proud one indeed. And uh, I invite you to join us. The text star 447 star 111 hash and make sure you're voting us to success. But page 16 of the Daily Graphic this morning talks about how 15 tankers have been burned in bone fuel depot uh, by fire, and at least 15 bulk road vehicles, otherwise known as fuel tankers, loaded with petroleum products were burnt when fire engulfed, engulfed a fuel storage deposit at Bung in the Greater Accra region last Wednesday too. Other um, of, of the tankers at the nearby tanker yard of Goodness Energy, an oil marketing company, were partially affected by the fire. Firefighters could not immediately determine the cause of the blaze, but the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers says it suspected foul play. Some eyewitnesses too gave an indication that the fire might have been caused by an attempt to transfer fuel from one tanker to another. The f fire, which started in the late hours of Wednesday, uh, was extinguished by the firemen from the Ghana National Fire Service and it took six fire engines from the team uh, office, to my office, I beg your pardon, of the Ghana National Fire Service to bring the blaze under control. There were some injuries as well, one person, and uh, well, the, there's proof of adulteration that is being mentioned here. They say they suspect foul play. Mr. Easy, stepping for me, um, is there cause to suspect foul play? Um, Johnny, let me say good morning to you, uh, your production crew, uh, the Honorable Abraham Maliba, and of course our viewers. Uh, we've 
saying well, uh, from what you've read, uh, something has happened at a depot. And prior to this, you know, uh, Senor Hossi, uh, the, ch the chief executive? Of, yes. Uh, yes, he's alluded to certain happenings in the industry that mm -hmm. he's not happy with and, and was taxing government uh, to take up the challenge to uh, clamp down those uh, activities. Mm -hmm. And so with this explosion, uh, they believe, uh, that's their initial uh, suspicion, that okay. uh, in individuals within the industry were engaged, and at the depot, were engaged mm -hmm. in these adulteration okay. uh, processes and co, which might have, it was being done manually. Mm -hmm. And so, which might, and you know, petroleum products are, are highly inflammable. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing these things within such uh, an arena, uh, there's the possibility, without precautions and co, there's a possibility of explosion, especially mm -hmm. if somebody's smoking nearby. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they, their preliminary findings mm -hmm. is that uh, they suspect foul play. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the details of that, but from what we've just read and what you also uh, gave us, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any cause to doubt uh, the initial suspic suspicion. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, because they have this suspicion, I pray either they allow the National Fire service or they themselves mm. set up a committee uh, to go into the details. About 15 tankers, you know, are right. gone. Mm. People's investments gone. And so we need to know how it happened and mm. why it, it, it happened. Is it true that these uh, individuals are trying to circumvent the processes mm. by doing illegal acts uh, which is resulted in this? Who are those individuals uh, behind these misconduct? Mm -hmm. So the committee uh, will be able to establish uh, the basis for the explosion and then those individuals behind it. If indeed mm -hmm. uh, it's an illegal conduct by people within the industry, then they're exposed and then, if possible, prosecuted. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important so we can uh, clamp down on this uh, conduct going forward. It causes the nation to lose revenue. Uh, individuals mm -hmm. who are operating in the industry have lost their investments. Okay, And so uh, let's see what we can do to give assurance to the people that if they go to the depots, mm -hmm. that may not be the only depot, they are going to cut uh, oil from uh, uh, weather at all or wherever to their various destinations. Mm -hmm. And so if I cannot be assured of safety of my tankers in any depot, okay. uh, then it will be very worrying for uh, tanker owners to begin to patronize the depots uh, that the state the, has There, there are two to legs them. to this conversation. One, the adulteration of yeah. uh, fuel yeah. or petroleum products, yeah. which will cause a lot of mechanical challenges to drivers vehicles, um, yeah. and owners of vehicles. Yeah. And the second leg will be how much revenue we lose as a country, yeah. you know, from some of these practices which authorities have bemoaned many times about. What do you what do you say? Yeah, both are worrying. You know, Senor, I don't know, I think Senor or somebody uh, has put a figure to it, about 2.7 billion right. Ghana CDs losses in the industry uh, in terms of taxes that could have accrued. Uh, to the government. And so that is worrying. And 2.7 billion is huge to, to get uh, the road sector moving, to get uh, secondary school education funded, mm -hmm. and then Ghana Education Service uh, mm -hmm. properly funded. Okay, and so if these things are happening there, I think we need to keep our eyes seriously. We have an eagle eye there, mm -hmm. and then be able to clamp down uh, on it. So it's, it's something that I think we shouldn't just uh, gloss over. Uh, in terms of revenue loss and the other leg, uh, I the think mechanical. mechanical uh, <laughs> you, you, you remember the bust right. issue right. from the wet go. Mm. You get it. So when I hear some of these things and I say, ah, "What's happening?" Because and and Johnny is a fact that some people profit from those things. Right. You get it. Mm. And so they are ready. If you are not vigilant, any less opportunity, they'll seize it and then. Uh, advance their financial gains. So okay. as a state and, and as a government, uh, I think we should collaborate with uh, Senyo and his team and then Duncan Amua and co to, to uh, watch the place carefully. Council, there are authorities um, and they're supposed to be everywhere, especially at these places. Uh, the MP is supposed to be there, the uh, CPC is supposed to be Everybody is supposed to be national security and everybody. So how can we have such a situation that will cost us more as a country, that will even be more dangerous to people like you who drive uh, vehicles. What do you say this morning, uh, hearing this? So that brings to question mm -hmm. what the safety precautions are in that 
vicinity, I mean the, the, the depot. Right. Such a highly volatile or highly inflammable environment, one would have expected that we have foolproof safety precautions mm. to forestall some of these things. Right. So for this to happen, it brings to question what the safety precautions are right. or protocols are in that area. They are, they are written down. Yes. So are they being followed? There's one thing displaying the safety precautions, mm -hmm. but are they being followed? Is there a supervisor who, on a daily basis, will go around and say, hey, what you are doing can spark fire? Right. You, uh, 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 this is not a, a good place for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Do we have that? It, it must be on a daily basis because this is a highly inflammable place. Right. So we we'll need answers to that. You have indicated to, by your uh, reading that um, there are indications of um, some uh, foul play. Foul play. Foul play right? If that is the case, then it amounts to arson. Mm -hmm. And arson is a criminal offense under our Criminal Offenses Act. The last time we heard about the uh, central medical store, exactly. nothing happened. Exactly. So it's akin to that. Now, investigations, if conducted, mm -hmm must be able to point at people who are responsible for the safety needs of the, that institution. Mm -hmm. And those persons who are supposed to protect and ensure mm -hmm. that the safety precautions, as I indicated, mm -hmm. are upheld, will be punished right. severely. Mm -hmm. In the absence of that, if we do not have people punished mm -hmm. for this type of uh, arson, mm -hmm. I think that we will continue to have such uh, fires. But let's not also gloss over the fact that there are people mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. benefit from such confusion. Mm -hmm. And so this investigation should not just only end at where, who is to, supposed to be responsible, mm -hmm. but also go beyond just those people and even find out, is it possible that some people could be hired from outside to come and engage in this dastardly act? Is that possible? That is possible. Um, we have people who are hired to go and engage in uh, nefarious activities. Okay. So the, 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 we should cast the net wide to include investigations beyond those who are within the uh, uh, depot, and then we need to find out whether people from outside might have also caused this dastardly act. Is it our, our willingness to punish the people, if you like, our failure to punish people, has that perhaps emboldened people to want to engage in some of these things? No doubt. You know, every criminal would do some balancing act. What is the percentage of my chance to succeed if I engage in it. Mm. And I'm told that about 80% of criminals get away with their booty. Mm. So it is, it is profitable to engage in criminal acts. Okay. Now, the question is, if they are caught, mm. what then happens? Do we punish them enough mm. to serve as a deterrent? I tend to say, we are not good at that as well. Okay. We would engage in long, long committee. We set a committee to sit for long periods. Mm -hmm. Then the findings would either be rejected by government, as we saw in the Yawasu West Wagon. <laughs> uh, 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 people are not punished. So once people are not punished, mm -hmm. it emboldens them. And so until we begin to crack the whip, some of these things will continue, I'm afraid. Zazi, what do you think about uh, our mode of punishment, or if you like, our level of punishment for people who are fingered as doing, causing us some of these uh, dangers? Yeah, uh, we, we, we shouldn't compromise on it at all. Uh, I agree with Honorable that uh, when we set up committee and, you know, people are found culpable, especially in these matters, mm -hmm. uh, we, 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 we 
prosecute them. But uh, sometimes he's a lawyer. There are some caveats uh, inherent therein. If you certain it and uh, you say CI 61, or correct me if I'm wrong, we're establishing that if I voluntarily appear before or I'm subpoenaed to appear before the Commission of Inquiry okay. and I give any information relevant. It cannot be used against me in the court of law. Okay. Okay. If you set that premise and then I come and then I divulge everything and the, per the report you say I should be prosecuted, it becomes problematic. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look at that in the face of the law. But if we set up committees and that says the reports of the committee, we are going to use it uh, as a basis for prosecution, that is also fine, which means if, if I don't come willingly, uh, I'll be subpoenaed to appear before. Where, where a government puts a white paper on it that says, um, well, we have seen your report, but we think otherwise. What do you say? No, that's, that's a constitutional matter. The government will study the report, and then we'll look at the pros and cons uh, uh, based on the processes of coming, arriving at your recommendation or conclusions, right? Mm. And then it says, uh, how can you say here this is the situation, and then in another point, we disagree with you based on those disagreements. Because mm. the Constitution uh, itself says there should be a basis for that. Whatever conclusion that is arrived at, mm. there should be ex reasoning adduced for those conclusions. Right. Okay. Mm. And so if you give and then you don't give enough or convincing reasons, you know, it's a constitutional matter within the remit of the uh, government to say, I admit or I do not admit. And this is not the first time mm -hmm. uh, white papers have been issued to uh, uh, reject some. I've, I've chronicled some here mm -hmm. the previous time. Mm -hmm. You get it. I don't want us to belabor that. But I think and I agree with Honorable Amali about that. We should begin to punish wrongdoers okay. uh, to, to serve as a disincentive mm -hmm. uh, for the, their conduct because they profit from it. Right. Okay? And so in order to stop that, for government revenue to go up, uh, we need to. The last one, the safety protocols thing. I think MPA mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't rest. You know, you remember when the atomic explosion happened, mm -hmm. a lot of things were put in place and uh, with a dis I'm with a disaster agency right. and I thought so far mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's been positive. Things are moving right. And then following after June 3, 2015 to uh, mm -hmm. we've learned a lot of lessons and cool. but I think we shouldn't relax MPA shouldn't relax so okay. far uh, Honorable Tampuli and his people have been doing very well they shouldn't rest on their oars they should keep uh, visiting uh, surprisingly mm -hmm. going to these places uh, to inspect for, for the safety protocols to be adhered to okay finally Amalba I want? just want to say that um, a white paper does seek to whitewash People who have been indicted is 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 simply a useless document because look, the findings of a commission of inquiry okay. becomes a judgment becomes a judgment after six months yeah. of the presentation of the mm. white paper. So whoever is suffering a disability mm. under the white paper is still suffering the dead disability. In other words, the white paper cannot whitewash your disability. Mm. So, I'm saying that once the white paper, uh, once the report has been published, okay. it becomes a judgment yeah. after six months. Yeah. Right. It does not lie in the mouth of the executive mm -hmm. to clear you mm -hmm. of that wrongdoing. So what would be the essence of the white paper then? That's what I'm saying that. The white paper in this case, cannot whitewash your disability. Okay. Your, your, your remedy lies in going to the Court of Appeal. Okay, to, to clear, clear your name. Yes. So why are you worried? So, yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm clearing the air. I'm, okay. I'm saying that it is much ado about nothing. Okay. So, for instance, if a white paper, a, a, a commission of inquiry says that Suleiman, the guy who slapped uh, right. Sam, George. Sam George, is culpable, after six months, it becomes a judgment. Mm. What it means, therefore, is that he cannot mm -hmm. present himself for any elections like, as a member of parliament. Right. You, you, you carry that disability with you for the next term. As, an, as an, uh, <laughs> You get the point. As a wrongdoer. Uh, as a wrongdoer. Mm. You ca it's a burden on you for the next 10 years. So what the white people sought to do to try to whitewash people is much ado about that. It cannot. Sure. Mm. It cannot do anything. The, the, so, the, the no. NCC boss yesterday, uh, Josephine Nkrumah, said that, well, we should be bold in following through legal processes to punish corrupt government officials. I want us to tie this in quickly. So there's a group asking for 
the government to prosecute uh, the gentleman who slapped Honorable Sam George. But the group itself is not going to court to demand for that punishment. Are they, are they asking for very little when they could have asked for so much? Uh, what is it so much? They are simply telling the government because this is a criminal offense. Private citizens cannot prosecute. Okay. So the, the right, the power to prosecute lies In the state. with the state. Mm. Who is representing us as a state? The government, mm. represented by the Attorney General. So this appeal is going to the government, maybe through the Attorney General. Okay. Um, luckily for us, mm -hmm. crime is not statute bad. Crime, mm -hmm. 20 years, 40 years. Still crime. It is still crime. So this recommendation that he should be prosecuted can be carried out after this government is no more in power. Is the NDC intending to do that? We would carry through what the commission says. Okay. We will ensure that uh, the recommendation of the commission would be strictly followed. And I can assure you that. Gr grant, grant me some public education. So you say after six months, uh, if you don't go to the appeals court to clear to, yourself, to, yes. then you carry, you carry the bedding, the bedding on yes, your head. Yes. So then do you become punishable? Do you become an ex-convict? What do you become? So your punishment mm. is in you not being able, for instance, to avail yourself to contest as a member of parliament. Okay. Because you are suffering from a disability. Right. From the commission. Right. Um, there are some things that, and that's just what I've given you. Okay. There are some things that if you were to, to occupy an office, you mm. can't occupy the office mm. because you are suffering from this disability. Okay. okay. So the, the punishment is in that form. Okay. Yes. Uh, really Great. Just uh, snap this thing. You see, I, I, I'm not a lawyer, but i minded to disagree with the Honorable in that the law says that within six months, mm -hmm. a white paper must be caused to be published. Failure of which the findings and recommendations and everything by the commission of inquiry is binding on the individuals. But he, he says that it, it you, doesn't you lie it. in the mouth of the executive to say no, that's why I say I your, disagree. Your white paper. That's why I say I disagree. Are, are you speaking okay. on, the, on the note of law? <laughs> yes, the constitution. Six you months. get it. He, he says within the six after the committee yeah, but, but has finished. Are, are you way. saying that within six months, government must take a position, that, must issue a white paper? Does, does, uh, does the law, does the law say? Does the law say that when government issues a white paper, then it nullifies or it changes no, the, white the recommendations is, no, of the, the commission? Yes, the white paper's position has direct bearing on the findings and recommendations. Otherwise, why should we? Why all these halabaloo? Okay. Why? <laughs> Okay. The, the so please, the, the, once a white paper the is issued, if it's not issued, then everything in the, the recommendation and the, finding is binding. The, so you have to go to a high court to clear appeals court to no, clear no, no, yourself. No, 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 no. Otherwise, no. once a white paper is issued, no, the executive is not the they are free. judiciary. It's not. That's, the, the executive is not the judiciary. <laughs> so the executive cannot constitute itself into a court of appeal. Okay. And then disagree or whitewash you from the. The, the, the wrongs no, that the, the commission has, the has, has said. <laughs> okay. So the executive white paper I'll cannot replace the cannot replace no cannot replace the court of appeal. So you are wrong on that. You are, you are, you are simply 16, wrong on that. Well, the white paper of the day, no, no, uh, uh, the the times. I'm All saying that okay. your white paper cannot undo the disability you are suffering <laughs> under a commission of inquiry. You okay, can't. thank you. The Ghana Institute of Journalism, my alma mater, is 60 years old, but the GJ, the Ghana Journalist Association, is 70 years old. And uh, at the, the second lecture of three lectures that have been slated to happen this year, the chairman of the National Media Commission, uh, lawyer, Yaobuidwa uh, Yabwafu, says, and I want to quote some, says, nobody has the right to stop a journalist from carrying out his or her constitutionally guaranteed duty, no matter how irresponsible the journalist may be. Whatsoever is, un or whosoever is unsatisfied with the professionalism of a journalist could um, do uh, would be to use civil procedures to have their concerns addressed at the appropriate fora, like a civil court, and he says. So he says the media attacks are reprehensible and abominable. Zaisi, I'll start with you. 
Okay, it says, is the media under siege, under attack? The ah. president said that, but we have found some key actors within the media space say, the president is not speaking. Uh, what is the, the fact on the ground? What, what are the facts? He's the head of the media commission, right? Mm. Uh, you, you're talking uh, Yabwe. Yeah, 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 yes. But, yeah. I, but I'm saying that the president yeah. recently spoke at the yes. bar conference yes. Yes. and said that there's yes. a lot of media freedom. It, it Af is after there. he spoke, there yeah. were some members of the media and some watchers who said, look, the president got it wrong. He didn't no. get it right no. because there have been a series of attacks yes. on the media. Yes. And that is not good. So the president cannot paint a very rosy picture. And here's <laughs> Mr. Yabodwa Ibafu, who is a lawyer as well, yeah. saying that, look, no matter how dissatisfied you are with media person's work, which is why the criminal libel law is taken yeah. out, yes. you can take on civil procedure yeah. and get it done and I not agree. to stop the people. So we have political actors and sometimes people in uniform seizing cameras, destroying them, beating up pressmen and all These of that. These are attacks on members of the media and we frown upon it. And the president the, says the media is not under attack. It's not under siege. No, that's, I think you okay. used that word. It's not mm. under siege. Mm. Uh, but there are individuals within the media space that are being attacked. Okay, That is appalling. We all abhor that. Mm. Uh, but in Ghana today... Uh, he, Johnny Hughes can walk from his house, get to his set, and run his program without any inhibitions. Me, me if you beat you, I'll beat you. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, I said it, and, and you see, you're taking, we, we, we will cite the Ahmed Swale. He's a media person uh, doing, who said it? Go to the US and other, up to now, we have such people. If you are an investigative journalist, you mm. ought to be extra careful in the conduct of your work. Mm. Everybody knows that. So I just find okay. scaling. No, 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 no. That because I'm not, allow, 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 allow me. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, allow me. I'm not justified. No, okay. you, you know why I'm saying that. Once a cover is blown on somebody, who an investigative the journalist. So, so this cover was blown on national who? TV. Uh, a man showed his photograph. <laughs> Kennedy Japan showed his no, photograph. No, yes, because he believes the way uh, uh, they carry out their underground work uh, is a bit, forgive the, my choice of word, uh, reprehensible. Because he thinks they do a good job and then there's, they commercialize. That's what he is was it, thinking. Is it not surprising? And so he thinks is it about what he thinks. Oh, okay, counsel, hold on. Is it not, is it, uh, what uh, he thinks informs counsel, his acts. Counsel, so, allow, counsel, allow me, okay. please. Yes, is it, is it not surprising you. that Mr. Kennedy Japon, um, who was accused in the murder of Mr. Ahmed Swale, went around uh, defending himself, jumping from one media house to the other? And in fact, there was one interview which I consider staged by Kofi TV when he was at the airport leaving yeah. and, and they had a full hour yeah. interview. Now this same Mr. Kennedy in Japan is on radio mentioning people and fingering them in the matter of Mr. J.B. Dankwedu, the Roman member for uh, yeah. some place in the Eastern region. Why, why not? It, is it not surprising that he would mount a stiff defense for himself and then on the reverse, he comes to expose people no, and say, no. Yeah, so go this is him. Yeah, if, if he's saying him, that, if you think he's maligned you, come on, take if him you on. Catch him, you beat get, him. Oh, no, no, it's, that one was the wrong uh, conduct, to be honest with you, okay? Beat uh, him, he's, I'll pay. He's one of my, the people I respect. He's like a political godfather to me. That's and, your political you know, godfather. He's part, he's part one of my ah. political godfathers. Central region. But you are being mischievous. <laughs> you, yeah, you, being mischievous. you get it. And I respect him so much. You get it. But his ways are entirely uh, different. He does his things uh, in, in a certain way. Blunts and then goes all out. Gun blazing and all that. But let me bring it back. You see, certain things have happened in the media space that people think is an attack. But I disagree. For instance, the militia are the heart of the city. Mm. Okay? We watched it and we thought, no, there's some deceptions and others, okay? I think your editorial this day uh, disagreed with some part of the uh, pictures that preceded the airing of the uh, video. You get it. I, I think I want you to correct me uh, if I'm wrong. So this is what is happening. And then a government says, no, what you're doing is maligning the, the government or so. So we go to media uh, commission, the appropriate place. Come, we went, the processes were gone through, and the media house lost the matter. Okay, so how is that an attack 
on media. Haji Afati at the party office. He we apologized. Okay, is that she apologized. Enough? Is no, that you know, no, you can take any other remedial measures, but when the person accepts that, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. I'm sorry, and I apologize. And you, the victim, admits and forgives the person. Mm -hmm. I think it's allowed within the media space. Okay, if it's a deliberate government policy mm -hmm. to clamp down on media practices, then we can rise up and say no. This is a president who has done a lot of pro bono work for media people. When mm. once upon a time a certain government uh, was trying to, you know, uh, bring culture of silence in this country. You get it? He did that and then he went on to fight for the expansion of the media space. As Attorney General, he led in the repeal of the criminal... Radio, Radio Gold is still shot. Monty is shot. No, <laughs> these are administrative shot. matters and must be followed. The, okay. the Constitution doesn't say because you have the freedom, the processes that guarantees those freedoms must be put to the back burner. It is not so. Okay. Then why do we have laws in the country? You have laws and guidelines that protect or, or direct you as to how to conduct yourself within a certain some, space. Some persons within the media fraternity <laughs> think that government has become intolerant of the no. press. Because the press is fact-checking, is no, pointing, we, is asking questions. No, we, we, the MPP, you know, uh, we have his kind, a lot of them in our fold, lawyers, a lot of lawyers. So when you raise the issue and we believe you're not right, we'll contest it, mm -hmm. okay? And when we do so, then you say, why are we contest? We should have allowed it to go like that. No, I don't think the media is under siege. I think the individual, some people within the media space are being attacked. Mm -hmm. It's true. We cannot gloss over that. The police, we've gotten some police people uh, doing that. And it's been there since the fourth Republican constitution okay. became operational. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we can do uh, to stop that. How can we do that? If a policeman is seen attacking a media person, let's the law follow through. Mm -hmm. You remember a, a Flagstaff House person in the pre previous and took a media man's camera and smashed it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What happened? You get it? It's not good. So let's do everything, whether you are the, the communications director of the president and the presidency or not. Once you do something that is not right and proper in the face of the law, as far as the media practice is concerned, let the law take let, its Let's course. take a final look at this one. So the president was out there overseas. Uh, I think they were, they were in a conference. And a, a Ghanaian journalist wanted to go in there to, ah, to ask a question. I'm sure you saw it on social media. And he was prevented by the security. He's not a journalist. Well, He's a citizen. He's not a journalist. Well, I mean, who, de de who determines who is a journalist? He's not a journalist. The man I says, the man says he's a journalist. Our constitution not. guarantees the right. <laughs> no, no. Of, whether of he's so, a citizen. So, so he could be a blogger. He could be whatever. Yeah, anything. But he says he's a journalist. And until you can prove to me that he's not, we take John, it on the face John, value. So, so John, my question now is... Yeah. The president was in a meeting. He was meeting Ghanaians. Yeah. And he says he suspects some corruption. So he's going there to ask questions. The security pushed him out. But one striking thing out there was, there was a gentleman who was filming the encounter. And the security asked him to stop. And he says, well, this is America. I can film. And that is the kind of freedom yeah. where sometimes you find a person in uniform or a government official misbehaving and you... You pick your cameras, even though it's branded, to go and film, and they actually chase you out. There have been instances like that. Okay. Our own Godfrey Tanam was beaten up. That's Latif where? of Multimedia was yeah. beaten up. Godfrey yeah. Tanam was beaten yeah. up by the MPP party yeah. office. Oh, oh, oh. so <laughs> so, so, so have happened. Mm. Yeah, and we all condemn them. Mm. You get it. And two, why do we have na national security and co? My presence, sometimes when I'm coming into these studios, your security people can tell you I'm a danger to, you know, the premises. Right. Based on whatever information they've got. Okay? And so if you're going a to journalist that place... With a journalist with a branded microphone, with a logo, a camera... No, no, I'm talking he, about the he, American, the guy. You right. Know, he's one of us. Okay. That guy is one of us. Mm -hmm. And so if security information is that his presence in the uh, hall is going to endanger the place, I'm not saying that is what they say. No security officer will allow you to go in there because okay. the president of the country, Ghana, is in there. Okay. Okay. And if anything happens mm. in that hall at that time, mm. the United States of America will be held liable okay. for not helping protect uh, a visiting president. You Thank get you. it. Thank and so let's let's not use that I as a carte okay. blanche to say that uh, uh, the media is under siege. No, we have other avenues to seek redress when we feel we are not being treated. And, and the, properly. So you say the media is not under siege. It's not under siege. Okay. The individual. Council, are being attacked. I am, council what do you I say? Am, I am. Is there press freedom? 
I am shocked to my bone marrow to hear this morning that going to ask the president a question in a conference room mm. amounts to posing a danger mm. <laughs> To, to, to posing a security yeah, danger yes. to, to the president. It says that the security decides. I am shocked. I am shocked. I am shocked. This is a man who the previous day mm. was in the hall and asked a question. Okay. Now he was now to follow up with evidence because the president indicated that if you have the evidence, mm. bring them. Right. Good. And he was stopped from entering the hall. And I'm now told that it could be a matter of a security threat to the president or whoever is in the hall. What's, I'm your, shocked. what's your worry? I'm shocked. <laughs> what's your I'm worry? I'm shocked, oh, yeah. my boom, Maru. See, under this administration, and that's the irony of it, he says that President Akufado is the one who repealed the criminal yeah. libel law. That's, agreed. that's a fact. Agreed. Mm. <laughs> this is my first time also hearing he that. Led. This is my first time. Exactly. Yes. So it's Kufour's administration. Right. Yes. He mm. but, but he was a telling general. Yes. Give him so credit. let's give the credit to Kufour yes. and yes. not no, him. No, no, that's what I said. Two. But the president he says was that a general. What's your difficulty in giving difficulty, a slice of the pie? My difficulty <laughs> is that when there is attribution <laughs> of good works done, it's okay. given to the president and not yes. his ministers. Okay. Or the well all over. Okay. I said he led it. Now, the second thing is that he talked about he defending um, journalists when he was uh, a lawyer, right. practicing lawyer. Right. Now, that is the irony of it. Why? You know, in English, there's irony. Yes. Right. Something which is opposite yes. to the, 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 the existing yeah. uh, situation. The irony is that under the same person, mm. our rankings in the World Freedom uh, Index mm has taken a nosedive. That's the irony. The irony is that under the same person, the attacks mm -hmm. on journalists mm -hmm. has ballooned, has increased too much. That's the irony. So if under the Messiah, Akufado, press freedom man, mm -hmm. these things are happening. Okay. I don't think that any communicator of the MPP should come to national television and be glorifying his previous work. We are talking about today. Today, what is happening? Nobody has said that the media is under siege. That's what the NPP We have, we have always said team. that the attacks on the, me, the media, mm -hmm. media men, is way above what we ordinarily know. And so it's a cause for worry. But any attack is reprehensible. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Whether that under NDC or MPP. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> don't, don't bring, you see? No, I'm you bringing journalists. It, I'm bringing it in because... You journalists. Because you Mr. Journalists. <laughs> took somebody's no, no, no. Uh, uh, no. recorder and crashed no. it. You journalists, <laughs> when under the NDC, you were condemning the NDC for similar acts, you never mentioned that the MPP also the same. I am saying that people have names, political party have names. Today, which political party is in power? Okay. And which political party must be held responsible? Stop belittling the thing and trying to say NDC also did it. Am when I, you am do am that, when you do that, it the significance of our discussion gets missing. Am I no. Today, 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 today is what? Today is uh, October what? Four. Today, October 4th. What is the situation with the media? That is what we are talking about. So you don't want to reach respect. We need history to guide us into the future. I have told you. <laughs> I have told you time without number. Okay. That any time a government is confronted with a challenge okay. and it goes back to refer to its predecessor, uh, it's a tacit admission of failure, your, 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 your being in power is to address these situations. He, but if they are increasing, mm. we know why history, if they are increasing, history means nothing to you. I am saying that President Muhammad called the media. He says there's a media cabal <laughs> to put all of us in the same basket. Are we, are we talking about the same issue that Yao Ayebuafo 
talked about that there's increased attack on the media. Is that what we are still talking or we are going back? But you are spreading it, so I'm helping you. That is unwelcome. <laughs> See, under this administration, yeah. journalists... We, we need to wrap up. Under so this administration, journalists up. who went about their activities without letter or hindrance okay. have been attacked to the extent that some have gone into exile to ensure their safety. Okay. Aren't oh, we worried about on, that? Come on. Aren't we worried about come, Manas Azure come. having to flee away because you know the, government, the, the, government, the, government, the government, the government of you this country failed to protect him? Aren't we ashamed that the international media recorded, uh, uh, broadcasted the killing of uh, 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 Ameswale to the extent that a member of parliament yes. belonging to the, uh, the, 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 his party mm. was cited and fingered for exposing the man. Aren't we, aren't we angry enough? So I do not want the situation where what we are talking about today, mm. things are getting worse. Under the uh, NDC, did we fall in the world rankings? Did no we fall? Johnny, did we just, fall? Just small okay. Did we fall? And if, if things are going bad from, from bad to worse, okay. and we are complaining, you don't go back and be talking Why? about issues that have gone <laughs> past here, and here. have been dealt with. Okay. I yeah. think that, was, look, I'll, the I'll president, the president has failed in, um. in, in two areas, I can say, yeah. in the area of corruption and the area of security. This country, are sure? we are not safe. Okay. Day in, day out, Johnny, we are being told mm -hmm. that insecurity is on the increase. And I think that Ghanaians must be told. Thank, to thank you. That. Thank you. Thank just you. especially yeah. when these things are happening, when Finally, the modus operandi of the chairman of major political party like the NDC mm. is to cause some of these mayhems within the space, to cause fear and panic among people. He was heard on tape. Mm. Telling his pe uh, uh, people to go do these things that, that to cause a, problem that, that for the government. Sport, is it not? Yes, so that so, is the so modus operandi. So, uh, so he, how do you know so that until, they until, are seriously his, behind the, look, some of these operations? I am yes. innocent. You get it. So no, that is a political thing. I am in that case. Okay? Once he's met so, and then he's told his people to go and do something. I know that I am in that case. The charges that were brought were amended. We cannot take them for granted. The charges that were brought were amended. Yes, correct. They were amended several times. They went, fishing. They, they, they went fishing for charges. They fishing? amended them several times. <laughs> but let me indicate that it is on record yes. that Ofosu Ampofo, the man that. who claimed Ofosu Ampofo was on tape mm. instigating violence, yeah. has been taken out of this country by these people. Oh, let me wow. tell you. Who is that person? Wow. The, the, the one the one that they referred they said he gave them Who the information. Who is that person? Well, how, how will I know? But it's the okay. tape no. right. no. we, we got to go. Thank you. you. No, thank you very it. much. The tape the is tape very authentic. Is authentic. Mr. Very George Bay is the National Communications Director of the National Disaster Management Organization, ADMO. And lawyer Abraham Maleva also speaks on behalf of the NDC is a member of the legal yes. team of the NDC. I'm Gentlemen, actually, I'm thank you. Because thank I'm not you. a man of positions, yeah. I don't care about positions. I'm actually the director of legal affairs. Director of legal yeah. affairs. You're a big man. Yeah. But, 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 a big man. A big man. A big man, a big lawyer. But I do not care about positions, so you can refer to I'm, me as. A big man, a big lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> a big lawyer, yes. Anyway. <laughs>